Hey fam, salam, hope you're doing well. So, I had some ideas I want to run by you. And this has to do with the border crisis at Texas. And also, California does have a problem with maintaining their infrastructure already. And providing little aid to the undocumented. So, I have some things I'd want to say to those of us in California and in Texas in general. Is that... We women who can afford to fit one more kid into our family should really consider that. Please, women, uh, you who are in your 30s, you have your college degrees, maybe you don't have children, you live in a nice home or a decent sized apartment, and you know, you have money, please consider adopting. I know it's time consuming, it's hard to adopt. The foster care system in our country is horrible. And we need to have solutions that are fast to help these children because we know where they're going to end up. These children are going to end up on the quote-unquote islands, and we know what that means. These kids are going to go into the underground. They're going to be used in the most horrific ways. This already happens to kids who are born here. Imagine kids who have, they're basically orphans. They don't have a mother. They don't have a father. They are, their parents, you know, were paid to allow them to be smuggled here by the coyotes, the traffickers, and in hopes of being sold the American dream, which doesn't exist. Okay, that is dead. Okay, we women have to step up and help these children. You can cut down your expenses greatly. You don't need all the shoes, the fashion, the makeup. We have to come together and save these children. Okay, just advocating for policies that you don't help is not a sustainable way for our country. Okay, further, follow me on this. We need to learn Spanish, all of us, and we need to be able to work with these children, help these children, go into their communities, and help them learn about American values, but also just protect them from the gangs, the traffickers, and the pimps and such. Because they're the ones who are gonna go into the ghettos. They already own it, and we know this. They own the ghettos. In California, and even in Texas, the gangs are taking over, and what they're doing to the young girls and young boys is horrific, okay? These people are going to discard these children, and they're going to be on the menu for those who pay to have them on the menu. And we cannot allow social media to censor us and say, you're a conspiracy theorist, nothing is happening to these children. The leaked footage from Project Veritas concerning how they're sleeping on the ground with these metal blankets... These children are all alone. These, we have to help them, okay? The Twitterati, all they do is retweet, likes, comment. They don't really do anything. They wanted open borders. They got it, basically. And they keep playing semantics about it's not open borders. Man, we have thousands upon thousands showing up. They're getting lost between the cracks. These little children who don't speak English, they're eight years old, little tiny kids. They have no idea where they are. They're around strangers. They are not with their parents. They're in a new country in a border facility. And the only ones who can help them are the border patrol agents. And the NGOs are not doing anything. Most of those NGOs, they steal the money. They, they don't really care. It's all a money-making scheme at the expense of the children. We have to step up. Okay, let's learn more Spanish. Let's learn about the topics we have to learn. We have to get these children. We have to help them. We have to adopt them. We have to foster them. We have to care. Now, I know you can do that already with American-born citizens, okay? This is very true. But we have to go farther now because there are so many kids showing up. And our leaders are encouraging it. They're failing. And they care more about uh, placating people's sensibilities without actually doing anything. We have to be the example. We women have to step up, help these children in the best way we can. You can have, start a little women's group where you have, I don't know, just something, you know, you start women's groups, clubs that you can host in your home. I know there's the lockdowns and the virus, but we can't let this get in the way anymore. We cannot hide behind the restrictions and prevent us from actually helping the children and organizing with the women and learning about their culture and also fixing our own culture because we can learn a lot from the undocumented. They come here, they see the weirdness of our culture, we should listen to them, and we cannot allow the musicians to sell them a lifestyle that will ruin their psychology, that will damage their relationships, and 
we have to fight against that. We have to help them. We And listen, a lot of people are saying we cannot uh, allow them in because they'll always vote Democrat. If you're a Republican, a Libertarian, a Tea Party member, whatever it is that you are, go to them and pitch your political ideas, okay? Anyone can be convinced of your idea. Where they were born does not determine their political leanings in the new country that they enter. If your ideas are so great, your policies are so important and educational and insightful, you, you should be able to pitch them to someone in a very thought-provoking way that will convince them of the merits of your ideology and policies. Okay, defend your stances and and persuade them to vote how you would want them to vote. Okay, you, they're not just Democrats because the Democrats offer them welfare. If you don't want them to be on welfare, pitch them the ideas of rugged individualism and entrepreneurship and such because a lot of Latinos who come across the border, they are hardworking people who are not soft soy boys. Okay, these these people know what it's like to suffer in the heat and suffer on the farms. They traveled so far to get here. Even if they were given a ride and someone paid them to come here, that's besides the point. They still showed up. The men you can send back, that's fine. Okay? The older women, but the children are the most important. Okay? They're the most important because they're the ones who are all alone and they have no one. We have to help them. We have to stop caring about the Kardashians and, you know, Miley Cyrus and all these celebrities who don't care at all. They're not going to be our saviors. The celebrities are not our saviors. We have to come together to help these children. Okay, if you can fit another kid in your family, you should. Okay, you have all these amenities in your homes of a first world country. You have all these, you know, all these pleasures. You can reduce that down in order to save one of these kids. Okay. To the religious organizations, the Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, whomever, Mormons, you name it. Got to come together and you got to help these, protect these kids. Okay, and to the governor of Texas and Governor Gavin Newsom, find a way to where volunteers, women who are vetted, who can pass a background check and such, can come to these facilities and guard the children from being assaulted by older men in the cells. I know they're separating them, but it's not preventing a lot. These little kids are being touched on, they're being felt up, they're being traumatized. We have to be able to help them. We have to be able to do something. The influencers on social media only cared when the orange man was in office and now they're making excuses not to care. Okay, they're using new words, doing double speak, playing rhetoric games and semantics. We have to be better than that. There is a real crisis, there is a real danger. There are so many people coming. It's overflowing. We have to do something. And we know that we, the people they're getting, the people who made it across and escaped the border facility, they're going to come to California or Texas. They're going to need jobs. And we have to also start making videos about what life is really like in America. The media sells a fake image of America that it's all you're going to have, you know, four cars, you're going to have a six bedroom house. No, in California, you're going to live in a ghetto, your kids are going to go to a crappy school. And gangbangers are going to be constantly tempting your children away from you into a bad lifestyle. I understand there's good things about this country that I love, but we have to be more honest about the raw reality and the ruggedness and the, and the brutality of these ghettos. And the people who are advocating open borders, a lot of them are online YouTubers who don't leave their homes a lot. They don't donate to charity. They're not volunteering. I actually housed a migrant family, a family of four. And it was very full. I've lived with the undocumented like them. I've slept in homes where there's so many of us, you don't even have room to move your feet. I've done it. I've seen it. I've been there. I love the Latino community, and that's why I decided to, you know, be really invested with them. I love the culture, okay? And eventually, God willing, I'll be able to go to Mexico and be able to travel around and teach and do things. But the point is this. They're here. The ones who are getting past border the border facilities are coming into the country with nothing and we need to be able to integrate them educate them and have infrastructure and jobs available and skills training I know they don't have an entitlement there's a legal way but listen they're still getting in with about the legal way it's about ten thousand dollars eight thousand dollars to get across the border all right people are gonna get in this is a fact all right you we have to we're, we're fighting too much about okay sanctuary cities versus deport this and then people don't want to deport the criminals they say they do and there's all these games people are playing with each other we need to come together 
and to figure out how do we make it so that they can succeed and how do we learn from them and learn from us but also protect the children. Okay, we don't want the gangs getting more young men into their recruitments because they're going to cause more malice. We already promote musicians in our culture who encourage people to do acts that will give them life in prison, that will spread malice in their communities, and people think it's cool, trendy, and it's, it's promoted constantly by all mainstream music artists, okay? This is a big beast we have to fight against, but what we have to do is to come together for the children, okay? If you can fit another kid in your family, you can go through the adoption process, you should do it. You should talk to, we need to find the numbers of the people who we can talk to, see if we can get some religious organizations to go down there and protect the children. And the border facilities, they need help. The cartels are distracting them with the children, overflowing them while allowing other dangerous people to get across the border. This is a fact, okay? We have to maintain our nation's security. We cannot have the left and the right wing fighting with each other while well, China gains dominance, why we lead endless wars in countries that we don't need to be in anymore, while well, our media promotes degeneracy and broken families to the youth, while well, the moms and dads are at work all day trying to avoid, you know, poverty, while well, drugs st- snatch the souls of our people, while well, the homeless are filling in the streets, while well, businesses are having a tar- hard time surviving because of the lockdown restrictions, the medical sector is not stepping up. Everything's for profit in the medical industry. We have so many issues grippling our nation right now. We need to cut off the entertainment, okay? We gotta get serious. And we're pointing out a dog piling on everyone else while ourselves not doing anything in the real world to help these children, to help these people get integrated. Listen, in California, in the food bank lines, if you are a liberal or whoever you are, a religious person, doesn't matter your political affiliations, at, at what I'm going to say, you can get a gift card from CVS, load it up with 200 bucks, right? Get it as much as you can afford. Instead of taking that vacation to the Bahamas or wherever, go in the lines, hand it out. You might have to do it quickly because you might get swarmed by more impoverished people and you might get robbed. But you can go down there and hand out some of the cards, Okay. Go to the immigrant zones. We know where they are. Don't knock on certain doors because they might get scared and think, you know, something bad. But find a way in which you can donate clothing, items directly to the people. We have to start doing direct action. These charity organizations, a lot of them are corrupt. And a lot of people get lazy. They say, oh, I donated this much money. I'll just trust the bureaucracy of the charity organizations to deal it out. Several studies have found that many charity organizations, they keep a lot of the money that, you know for overhead fees and such there's a lot of games and semantics to that and a lot of corruptions in charity it's very profitable it's quite sad we have to start doing direct actions ourselves start your own groups okay we have to find a way to where we can uh, the federal government to basically do what the federal government is not doing okay we have the weakest leader we've ever had in the history of this nation a sickly dementia ridden old man the media censors it they're protecting him and the cackling cop you know, woman in heels, the Ice Queen is not exactly this nurturing figure, nor is she a soldier like Tulsi Gabbard, okay? She's, you know, she's good for a VP, but I don't think she could handle this crisis. The fact that she laughed when somebody told her, are you going to go down to the border? She cackled and said, not today. She's clearly not a woman who cares about these children, all right? All the poetic speech they do is all fake. We ourselves, the women... In America, we have to step up. We need to learn more Spanish. We got to learn, okay? I know they say, well, they come here to learn English. Yeah, teach them English, they teach you Spanish. We learn together, okay? We have to be able to communicate with them, integrate them, help them survive and thrive because they have work ethic that can help purify this nation from degeneracy, okay? A lot of Latinos who come here are religious. That is a help, all right? They believe in God. They believe in hard work. A lot of them, they know what it's like to suffer. They know what it's like to deal without. They're not uh, pompous, pampered, spoiled brats who live online. These people are more raw and real and have a more authentic perception of reality that can help cleanse this nation. We can utilize them and they they can utilize us and we can exchange ideas and perfect ourselves and elevate our status and level up. We have to come together as a nation 
And, you know, I'm telling you, we're concentrating so much on our beautification and not our humanity and charity with these children. Because you just, just think about how lonely they are, these poor little kids, all by themselves, how scary that is, okay? We have to do something. Our job is to guard children, okay? It's cool to have your career. It's cool to be at home, maybe only thinking about yourself. But we have to find a way to start it ourselves. And you might only have one or two people in your group in the beginning, and maybe don't people don't show up. But you got to try. We got to try, okay? We cannot just have the young teenage girls going into OnlyFans and being, you know, vapid narcissists, egotistical maniacs, and sociopaths. We need to start putting our foot forward and leading by example. All this infighting that we do in our culture now, the attack, who do you do this? No, we got to lead, but we got to help these kids. Because these kids, they'll learn to love us and love our country if we help them. If we abandon them, that only serves to for the utility of evil and malice. They will resent us for not helping them. They came here because they were sold a lie by media, by musicians, influencers online, glamorizing a lifestyle that is very unattainable now to so many people. Okay? Communism is not the solution. Neither is overly, you know, free market capitalism. We need a hybrid focus. But also, the ethics has to come into play. Our own personal ethics. Please, ladies, start talking about the children. Have empathy, okay? Have empathy. Reduce what you do online and get in there and help. And if you do have something, encourage motherhood. Encourage helping children, okay? These people are advocating for things that they don't do. We have to help. You cannot invite people in and then toss them on their own and say good luck and then think you're a good person. You don't invite someone into your house for food and then not have any food in your fridge and then leave your house and go somewhere else and leave them on their own. This is not sustainable. We cannot sustain this as a country. Please consider what I'm saying because these poor kids, man, they're going to end up in some dark places and we know it. And don't let these people keep telling you that doesn't exist. It does exist. People just ignore it because they're on TikTok all day. They're worried about, you know, if their 17th pair of shoes has arrived or if they got to go get their hair dyed a different color for the 17th time. Okay? We have to put our focus on these kids. We have to love them, help them, guard them. That's our duty. All right? We really can cut back our hours at work. And cut back on your vacations in order to find a way to help them and to volunteer. We need to do it. Okay, fashion, all these things that we have, this materialism, consumerism, it doesn't matter. These little kids, man, they're all alone. They have no one to hug them at night. No one to brush their hair, help them brush their teeth. They don't have the, their little cute stuffed animals to make them feel safe at night. Or a little cozy blanket they can snuggle. They don't have that. They don't have someone to brush their hair, caress their cheek, and, and help them survive. We have to do it, okay? We have to protect them, enrich them, strengthen them, fortify them with courage and honor and the love of God. We have to do it. No one's going to do it. We cannot just keep sitting in our homes or going out with our friends, partying, or whatever it is we're doing, and just ignore these kids. Think about, you go to the bar, right? A beer is $3.75, $4, plus tip for the bartender. How much is people spending on tequila shots, vodka shots, margaritas, all these different drinks? How many bills, like, you got? You spend, like, 300 in a night on a, on a weekend with your friends in San Francisco, some of you in California. Stop doing that. Save that money. Go and give that money directly to an immigrant. I know you say, well, I work hard. I want to party. It's my money. I do what I want. No, we can't do that anymore. California is falling apart. And I know the rich will say, well, we'll leave. Right? Well, we'll just leave. Our ghettos in California are already full. There's so much mental illness everywhere. There's people addicted to drugs strung out. There's prostitutes who have intercourse on the street while you're driving by. Okay? There's tents up everywhere. And people think, well, I look out my window. The sun is shining. There's no problem. It ain't happening to me. I'm going to do my business. I'm going to go to brunch. I'm going to go hang out with my friends and I'm going to look cute and make sure my, you know, my lipstick is the right shade to match my shoes or whatever. We have to move beyond that. We're becoming so vapid, right? The, the materialism of our culture is causing us to become more evil. It's, you know, stop with the trolling online. Stop do, doing all these worthless things. 
We gotta help each other. Ladies, come on. Let's step up. Come on. You got like how many pairs of shoes you have? How many pairs of pants you have? How many bracelets you got? Or fancy earrings? Cut all that back. Cut all of it back. Donate it to somebody. And I know, I know, I know. They're gonna say, well, giving them throwing money is not gonna solve the problem. I know. But volunteer your time if you don't got money. Read to somebody. Go to the little kids. Read to them. Go to the communities. Walk around. And, you know, try to engage with people. Do a, do, a, do a walkabout. Be careful. You might have to have a firearm. You might have to have a knife because the gangs are taking over and they might not like you in their territory, you know, turning people towards the straight path. But you have to risk it, okay? The gang members are taking over while the woke say they want to defund cops and send social workers, okay? We, we have to have multiple solutions. There's a lot of police brutality, yes. But also, who are you going to call when the gangs are outside your door? And I've had gang members show up. I've had these, you know, I've been shot at. I've, I've had these problems, okay? We have to be brave. We cannot bow down to this crime that is taking over. California is a failed state that's propped up by Silicon Valley, Napa, and the financial district in San Francisco. We cannot ignore all the decay in California and leave it up to our failed elected leaders because they're just one, there's too much bureaucracy. There's too much bureaucracy. There's a big net of like paperwork, you gotta do this, you gotta make an appointment, you gotta be on hold and talk to a robot and then you have to press zero to talk to a representative who has to transfer you to someone else and on and on and on and on and on. They do that on purpose. There's, the government is very large yet so ineffectual. That's why we have to have grassroots organizations, okay? But to be careful who we deal with because there's still corruption in those arenas as well, right? But we can lead by example. Like, for example, you, you could babysit for free for somebody, okay? Let's say there's a kid in your class, their mom, she's she's single mom, or her man doesn't make a lot of money, and they're basically just poor, you know? You can give that kid a safe home, you know, twice a week. Hey, have your kid come over to my house for five, six hours. I'll make them snacks. We'll, you know, color, paint, do cute crafts, you know, and I'll, you know, be able to protect your kid while you go to work and earn money. This, we got to do stuff like that. All right, we gotta help women. We go to see them. Hey, how are you doing? You know, salam. Do you need any diapers? What do you need? And if a woman wants to breastfeed, that's also very healthy. Get these kids off this soy powder crap that is not really healthy for them, and gives them colac and makes the babies cry. If a woman wants to nurse, say, how long do you want to nurse for? You want to nurse for a year? I'll help you be able to buy food and stay at home, and you can nurse your baby. And you know, you check up on her, you visit her. You know, also the women who had just given birth, you know, volunteer in the hospital. Find a way where you can go there and say, you know, do the mothers need anything? Do they need, a, you know, a little care package? You can put lotion in there, cute little fuzzy socks, a cute little baby hat. These little gift baskets you can give the mothers who just gave birth. We need to hold some type of events, all right? Even what we could also do, you set up a table somewhere, get a permit. Because it used to be so easy, you could set up a table anywhere. But California started regulating people to where they can't just set up and start selling things in the street without a permit. Which is weird because you're allowed to be a gangbanger and be homeless, but you're not allowed to, you know, set up a little table selling things. But what we could also do is you can, let's say you set up a barbecue or in a park, right? You say free hot dogs for everyone who shows up, right? Halal hot dogs with no pork. Beef, you know, chicken. Turkey, Locasea. So you would set up a little table, and then all the little kids in the park, doesn't matter if they know you or not, you say, who would like a hot dog? Who wants a cheeseburger? Come and get it. And then all the little kids in the park come, and you, you, you pay for everything. It might cost you, you know, 300 bucks, but you feed the children, and you give them a memory. And maybe you have some coloring books you can get from the dollar store, and you give each little kid a coloring book and some crayons and say, oh, salam, you know. Well, I'll have mercy on you and you give out little gifts to the kids. We have to start doing things in our community at random spots. Now, don't depend just on Facebook to create events and stuff like that. You can also, if you don't got money, get a printer, right? You got a printer, go in, you know, Microsoft Word, make a little flyer or whatever you want to use. Uh, staple it onto the post like the old-fashioned ways or tape it depending on if your light posts are metal or wood and advertise it two weeks ahead of time and then do it and summer is coming up you can also just go to the parks 
put up a little sign and says, welcome all, who wants, you know, some ice cream, who wants, you know, a salad, whatever it is healthy you want to give, fruit, give fruit, whatever it is, do something kind. Also, to the kids who are in, like, there's different counties where the school systems are very underfunded. Go to the school and say, how many kids do you have in uh, first grade? I want to have a little gift bag, like have little cute erasers, pencils, maybe like two little cute chocolates. You can go to the dollar stores and get cute little treats for the kids that don't cost a whole lot. And then ask the teachers like, okay, I want to donate this to the kids. And then you go in the classroom, you say, hello everyone, I have a little gift for everyone. And you make sure you get the count right so that no kid gets left out. And you do activities like that to create bonding in the community. Okay? And... Let's say you see a kid in one of the classrooms who he doesn't have nice shoes. I've seen that a lot, where the kids, they got holes in the shoes, their whole toe is out. You can say, what size shoes do you wear, sweetheart? Ask your mommy. And then you talk to the mom. She might be kind of embarrassed. But you say, how many shoes, what kind of shoes size you wear, right? And you can also buy, if you can afford it, from a good shoe company. You don't have to just buy the, the wage slave China shoes that are, you know, contributing to the problem of child labor and such. You can buy from a good shoe company. It might cost you, what, 10 bucks more to buy a shoe for a kid? But you can do it. These small actions we can do can inspire other women to step up and be more nurturing. Instead of being just vapid sex objects, we could be the nurturing mothers, the guardians of the children, with strength, vigor, honor, morality, and modesty to help these kids because they need us. So we have to think of creative affordable ways where you can have direct action to help these kids because we cannot simply pass it off to the government because the state's governors and city members and people who live along the border have been crying out saying we don't have the funding or the aid we need and it's not working meanwhile people are pouring in we have to be able to step up and help we cannot just sit around and wait for others to do it we must lead by example and I'm telling you, people will watch cat videos all day, but they won't go out and help somebody or babysit. They'll go out with their friends and gossip all day, but they won't tutor a kid on how to read. I mean, we gotta start really waking up. We live in an illusion. We're only here for a short time. Let's make sure we do good deeds. I'm gonna find more ways. And it's hard sometimes because you gotta be careful who you trust and who you let into your home and all this other stuff. I know. And the pandemic is making it hard. But we have to try something. We cannot just leave it up to the officials and go about our day as if everything is fine because it clearly our country is suffering. There is poverty everywhere and people ignore it as they drive to their commute to work and then they go in their office and they ignore it. We cannot do that, all right? If you cannot have the newest car, who cares? How about this? Instead of buying the newest car, you get a car made in the 90s, you know? Yeah, it may not have as good gas mileage or something, but you don't need the newest car. You take that profit, that 10 grand that you would have spent on your car, right? You go instead and give that all out as direct charity yourself to people who you can clearly see need it, all right? Further, with the homeless people, some of them you can give direct food, right? They have, some of them have crippling addictions, okay? Try to, if you can, it's hard. I'm not very good at it. I'm not good at dealing with other people's mental problems. But some people are really good at giving therapy and having people vent to them about their issues and letting them have a shoulder to cry on or something like that. That is not my arena. I'm, my skills are different, right? But some people do have the patience and the sort of heart and to do that kind of stuff. So people can do that as well. Now, I understand you have to protect your mental health. You cannot allow other people's problems to overwhelm you and absorb you right you don't want to get too involved with other people's drama but there are instances where you can help right if there's an old lady right you can go on a walk with her talk to her talk about whatever she wants to talk about find a way to connect with her we need to start getting back to people and helping them and focusing on that because if we do that you know the people who are coming across the border they might be more motivated to be participating in this country and not have a parallel society we have to help them and they will help us but please Find a way for you to get involved to help these children. If you can adopt, consider adopting. You can babysit and help, help it. We cannot 
and also ourselves cut off the gangster music. I did it slowly, slowly getting there, right? Now, if you want to hear a rap battle with no music and it's like some lyrical skill there, that's basically like poetry. It's quite different. I understand. But the mainstream musicians cut them off from your brain, stop giving them your attention, level up and put your focus towards something better because what we consume in those arenas the children are seeing it and our children are being purposely targeted by degeneracy and the brothel industries and we must find clever ways to combat them that won't get us banned or censored for hate speech because that's what social media is doing they are saying that every criticism of degenerate lifestyle is hate speech so if you do things in the real world, lead by example, they can't censor that yet. They'll try eventually. They'll try eventually. But we have to work on it. So please, ladies, consider what I'm saying. Change your life today. We have to get involved with these poor children and help them because they're the ones who are going to need the help. All right? Trust me. Life is not just about the male gaze and your own reflection in the mirror and your bank account. If you have enough to buy a bag of rice, buy some tortillas, a bag of beans, you got a water filter, you got electricity, you got a little cup of coffee, you got a little milk, you got some eggs, some flour, some salt, a little bit of sugar, some honey, your life is pretty awesome and you can create all